Here are 10 reasons to never eat wheat again. Now you've been told the opposite, right? By dietitians, by doctors, by the American Heart Association, by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, American Diabetes Association, US Dietary Guidelines for Americans, right? They all agree our diets should be weighted heavily in favor of lots and lots of grains, right? Every meal, every snack should include some form of grains, especially wheat. Well, I'm gonna tell you the opposite is true. And here are 10 reasons why. Reason number one, the gliadin protein of wheat, as well as related proteins in other grains, like the cecolin and rye, the hordein and barley, the zein and corn, the gliadin protein of wheat is very poorly digested. And that's because the proteins of grains are from seeds of grasses, and humans don't have the digestive enzymes to break down components of grasses. So the gliadin protein is broken down only into pieces that are four or five amino acids long. Now, if you ate an egg, or a pork chop, or a piece of steak, or a piece of salmon, those proteins are broken down into single amino acids. But the gliadin protein is not fully digestible by humans. It's broken down to four or five amino acids long peptides. These peptides are very unique. They act as opioids. They can cross into the brain and bind to the opioid receptors. And they stimulate appetite when they do that. They massively stimulate appetite. And that's why people who consume wheat uh, let's say as a big bowl of pasta and you're so full you're bursting, but you're still hungry Or you've had numerous slices of pizza and you're still hungry even when your stomach is full That's the gliadin derived opioid peptide appetite stimulating effect Get rid of the sources of gliadin that is wheat and related grains and appetite dramatically diminishes Reason number two those same gliadin derived opioid peptides have other mind active effects. They can cause depression in people who are prone to that and dark thoughts, even suicidal thoughts. If you're prone to bipolar illness, it can trigger the mania, the up phase. If you're a child with ADHD or autism, the gliadin derived opioid peptides can cause behavioral outbursts and shorten your attention span. If you're prone to bulimia or binge eating disorder, gliadin derived opioid peptides can trigger 24 hour a day food obsessions, the kind that cause these people to sit in front of a refrigerator at 3 a.m. and binging and then go to the toilet and purging. Reason number three, intact gliadin, some of the gliadin protein remains intact, has been found to be the protein that initiates autoimmune diseases like type one diabetes in kids and rheumatoid arthritis. That's a long list of diseases, of very bad diseases. Number four, the amylopectin A, the carbohydrate, the complex carbohydrate of wheat and grains, is highly and unusually digestible. And that's because we have the enzyme amylase in our mouth and in our stomachs that immediately breaks down amylopectin A and turns it into blood sugar. So the amylopectin A of wheat and grains raises blood sugar very high, ounce for ounce, higher than table sugar. And that's why people who consume a lot of wheat and other grains become diabetic and develop insulin resistance, all the phenomena of insulin resistance, like visceral fat. So getting rid of the amylopectin A, thereby, that is wheat and grains, gives you enormous control over blood sugar and your insulin responses. Reason number five, wheat germaglutinin, another protein in wheat, is highly toxic to the gastrointestinal tract. A little bit, milligram quantities of wheat germaglutinin damages the intestinal lining, the little villi, the hair-like structures that line the intestine. It damages them. Those changes can be so bad it looks just like celiac disease, even though you don't have celiac disease. You don't have the genetics nor the autoimmune response that generates celiac disease. But wheat germaglutinin can actually provoke that response. It's called agglutinin because when it contacts blood, it causes blood clotting or agglutination, okay? Reason number six, that same protein, wheat germaglutinin, also blocks pancreatic and gallbladder function. And the reason for that is wheat germaglutinin is a very potent blocker of an intestinal hormone called cholecystokinin, or we say CCK. If I eat food and that food contacts my duodenum, it releases, the duodenum releases CCK, and that provokes the pancreas to release its pancreatic digestive enzymes. It provokes the gallbladder to squeeze and push out bile. And all this leads to better digestion of foods. Well, wheat germaglutinin blocks that effect. So you have ineffective digestion.
and all the consequences of that. Heartburn, change in bowel flora, putrefaction. So wheat germ gluten is a great disruptor of digestion. Reason number seven, the phytates or phytic acids that occur in wheat and related grains. Phytates are very potent binders of positively charged minerals like calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc, and others. And when you have phytates, let's say from two slices of whole wheat bread in a sandwich, it binds nearly all the iron, for instance, and you lose it in the toilet. You bind almost all the magnesium, likewise it passes up, calcium and zinc also. So you can suffer all the consequences of deficiencies of all those hormones. So ironically, we're often told to eat wheat and grains for their B vitamins and fiber, right? So we get nutrients. Actually, consuming grains causes numerous mineral deficiencies. Reason number eight, there are numerous allergens in wheat, especially in modern wheat. So agribusiness and geneticists have changed wheat as you may recall, wheat is no longer a four and a half foot tall traditional plant. It's an 18 inch tall, short, stocky, semi-dwarf, high yield strain. Well, so the appearance is completely different. Its genetics are different. Its biochemistry is different. Its physiology is different. And a lot of the proteins have different structures. And many of those proteins cause allergies in humans who consume wheat products. Allergies to wheat proteins can show up as uh, stomach upset, acid reflux, uh, 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 asthma, skin rashes, gastrointestinal distress. It can take on many different forms, but it all boils down to a lot of the new allergens introduced in the modern wheat. Number nine, wheat contains components that are potent endocrine disruptors. So it, some of these effects are indirect, like the amylopectin A leads to accumulation of visceral fat, and visceral fat is, is a, it becomes an organ that causes endocrine disruption. Uh, the gliadin protein, gliadin-derived opioid peptides, trigger appetite, and you grow visceral fat. Okay, so there's, there's a whole collection of phenomena that come from consumption of wheat that leads to endocrine disruption. And it shows up as polycystic ovary syndrome in females who become infertile, they have excessive facial hair, they are diabetes-prone, hypertension-prone. And the good news is if you get rid of wheat and grains, polycystic ovarian syndrome often just goes back to normal. Guys, likewise, guys will get visceral fat and in turn grow breasts. That's from the uh, uh, visceral fat that converts testosterone to estrogens. And uh, one of the gliadin-derived opioid peptides is also a stimulator of prolactin from the brain. And prolactin, prolactation, prepares the breasts for breastfeeding. So that's why men get breasts when they consume um, uh, wheat and grains. So once again, the remedy, eat no wheat and grains. Last reason, reason number 10, big food, big food manufacturers use the phenomenon of gliadin derived opioid peptides from wheat to influence your buying and eating behavior. And that's why you see wheat and other grain components in virtually every processed food on the shelf. You know, that wasn't true in 1960 before this was all known, but in the late eighties, when the altered forms of wheat and thereby the gliadin protein led to more potent opioid peptide appetite stimulating effects from wheat products, we all of a sudden saw wheat and related grains put in virtually every processed food. And I think that's part of the reason why there was a marked increase in calorie intake in the late 1980s. Once again, solution, eat no wheat and grains and be freed of being influenced, your buying behavior, your eating behavior by big food. So there you have it, 10 reasons to never let wheat, a croissant, a donut, a bagel ever cross your lips again if it's made with wheat or grains. Now, this does not mean that if you're following the wheat belly or by undoctored lifestyles that you'll never have a pizza again or never have a piece of cheesecake or you'll sit at Thanksgiving and you can't have any gravy or biscuits. You can have all those things. But what we do in this life, these lifestyles is we recreate those tasty foods without wheat and grains. We use benign flours and other ingredients like almond flour, coconut flour, ground golden flaxseed, other nut meals, etc. And you can recreate delicious foods that don't have any of these awful effects. So those are the 10 reasons. Uh, for more conversations like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to my Wheat Belly blog or Wheat Belly Facebook page or my Undoctored blog and Undoctored Facebook page.